Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to your Glen Echo Park. You've got a beautiful day to open it, and it is a beautiful park. I love this place. Thank you. So now I'm going to go through a bunch of thank yous because this park would not have been possible without the cooperation of all these people and organizations that I will be mentioning. Joanna L. Gibson. She, yeah, right. She was the she sold the land to Stoughton for conservation purposes, and we thank her for that. John Morton, who among other things arranged for the purchase of the property for Mrs. Gibson. John Linehan and Artis Johnson, who strongly advocated for the purchase of the property and were very, ad very much pushed for this. And as part of the process, the residents of Stoughton and Canton participated in a survey telling what we wanted in this park and what we didn't want in this park. And we thank them for that. And thank you. Cal Zick, he was the landscape architect that took all that information from the survey and made the preliminary designs for the park. <laughs> the fabulous Glen Echo Recreation and Development Committee. We've got some members in the back there that oversaw and directed the park development. Chairman Eric Coleman. Dory Frankel was the prior chair of the Glen Echo Committee, uh, Glen Echo Recreation and Development Committee, who did most of the work and got us through to around this point here. Mark Tisdale, who is coaching a uh, some sports team now, Craig Horsfell, who could not be here. And they're in engineering who put the designs on paper, including the hydraulic and environmental concerns. And without their help, and, and the, their help, they helped the Glen Echo Committee immensely. <laughs> the Community Preservation Committee, who is our source of funding. <laughs> Forrest Lindwall, who I don't think is here. He, he, yes. He surveyed the, he, he uh, <coughs> solved the surveying problem, which would have put this thing out of reach, and he made it work. Forrest Lindwell. <laughs> Wildlands Trust, I don't know if, is anybody here from Wildlands Trust? Uh, they assisted us in protecting the open space. <laughs> the Massachusetts tried at Punkapog, our good park neighbor, over there, bordering the lake on that side. <laughs> the town of Canton, our good neighbor, across the pond, across the lake. <laughs> and especially the Glen Echo uh, Boulevard residents for their patience and cooperations throughout this whole project. Thank you very much. You're very patient. Now, I'm going to read off. We, we don't have to. We can wait in the applause until the end. These are the Stoughton committees that uh, participated in this. Okay. Open Space Committee, Planning Board, Police Department, Procurement Department, Public Works Department, Redevelopment Authority, Select Board, Stoughton Historical Society, Stoughton Town Meeting, and the Town Accountants. Okay. And the following... <laughs> yes. And the following Massachusetts agencies, Massachusetts Parks Grant Commission, who gave us a grant to help out here, Massachusetts Historical Commission, Massachusetts Division of Conservation Services, <laughs> uh, 
And lastly, those who are working for and achieve their Eagle Scouts who made contributions to this park. Adil uh, Kanad, can you stand up and be recognized, please? Yahoo! Thank you. He's going to be working on signs with Dwight for the historical uh, locations. We thank them all for making this park possible. Now, I would like to welcome Walter Timothy to speak to us. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. Thank you and good morning. Good morning, Chair Roberts. Good morning. Mark Domanian, I see you. Lou Gito is here, Steve Cavey from the Select Board as well, and various representatives from great boards here in this town and great committees that do great work for us all. Uh, it's my privilege to be here on behalf of Bill Galvin and Ted Phillips, first of all, to say thank you to the Glen Echo Committee and every single department in town and committee that made this happen. The people of this town deserve the very best, and with this park, it's another example of the people of Stoughton getting the very best. And, uh, yes, absolutely. So to the Glen Echo Committee and each and every department and committee, and our scouts, of course, that Eric, you so aptly delineated, thank you very much for what you've done. This is great teamwork. Stoughton is all about teamwork, and I'm a proud to be a part of it, so I thank you for that. Uh, Eric, if you would come forward, please. I offered recognition in the State Senate, honoring the Glen Echo Committee and the town of Stoughton. So if you would come forward, please, Eric. And if Chair Roberts would come forward, please. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Chair Roberts. Now, these citations are offered in the State Senate. Uh, they're recorded in the records of the State Senate in perpetuity, honoring the great works, the great achievement that is Glen Echo Park. And this reads as follows. Commonwealth of Massachusetts State Senate, official citation. Be it known the Massachusetts State Senate hereby extends its congratulations to each and every member of the Glen Echo Committee. Thank you for this magnificent tribute to nature for our town in recognition of the joyous occasion of the grand opening of Glen Echo Park. And it is a joyous occasion. And be it further note, the Massachusetts State Senate extends its best wishes for continued success. The best is yet to come here at Glen Echo. That this citation be duly signed by the President and a copy thereof attested to by a clerk. It's been signed by our Senate President, Senator Karen E. Spilka, and offered by myself, one very proud State Senator, to the Glen Echo Committee and the great town of Stoughton. And there we go. Eric, thank you so much. Thank you. And to Chair Roberts. This is for the town of Stoughton for once again stepping up. The town of Stoughton always steps up, and I thank you for everything that the town does. And on behalf of myself and Bill and Ted, thank you so much to the entire town. Chair Roberts. Thank you, thank you so very much. much. We have some members of the Glen Echo Committee in back here. Would you stand up and be recognized, please? Yay! Thank you for your work. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Eric, and thank you so much. What a wonderful day. Every day is a great day in Stoughton, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we've... Are we on? Hello. Okay, we've got Mark Zemanian, chair of the uh, CPC, to speak. Mark, are you ready? Thank you, Eric, and thank you all for being here today. Um, I want to thank Senator Timothy. Uh, for joining us today and for giving out those citations. Um, I've known Walter a very long time, uh, more than four decades, and Walter, to me at least, is the epitome of what a politician should be. Um, and this is not because of Tuesday, folks. This is, this is honest. Um, Walter supports Stoughton. He's here for Stoughton. He represents our citizens as he does all the citizens in, all, in his entire district. And I want to thank him, and I want to thank, thank you, Representative Phillips and Representative Galvin, who could not be here today. So from the bottom of my heart, Walter, I thank you for all you do for Stoughton. So Eric made my list very short, which is wonderful, because I didn't want to take too much time today. Um, I do once again want to thank Mark Tisdale, Craig Horsfall, the engineering department, all the staff here uh, at, at Town Hall that helped make this a reality. Um, I also want to thank, again, the Open Space Committee 
and Conservation Commission, um, the members of the CPC who, who really have carried this ball from the start, John Morton, the, the paternal father, if you will, of, of this here uh, park. And in many ways, I feel that without John's dedication to this, this wouldn't have happened. So thank you, John. The residents here at, at Glen Echo Boulevard and the surrounding streets and the residents of Canton, you've put up with an awful lot. And and I really hope that this park, you know, helps assuage some of that pain that you've you've suffered through. Any change is difficult for us as a town, um, but most importantly for the residents that are affected. Uh, so I wanted to thank you personally for all that you've done. Thank you again. Um, most importantly, this would not have happened without the town meeting representatives. Um, this land was purchased uh, through town meeting in 2011. Uh, plans were developed and uh, through the CPC, town meeting funded twice, once in 2015 and once in 2020, again as a supplemental package, this park. Um, I think this is just the beginning. I think this is going to become a greater place even still. Um, when I first moved to Stoughton, I walked this area with my children and my wife and I, I must admit I did not have the vision that, that many of the other people here before you today had. Uh, I just saw an overgrown field. Um, so to see this today where we can have picnics, where we can enjoy walks, mountain bike, um, this is just an incredible thing, and it, it's due to the vision of those folks who worked so hard to do this uh, and have this place for us today. So I thank you all for your time, and I, I do want to thank the select board. I know they get a bad rap because the original board didn't support this, but the current select board has been very supportive of this initiative and getting this done. So thank you for, to the entire board and, and Chair Roberts, Vice Chair Cavey. <laughs> Who are with us today. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce John Linehan. Uh, John's the chair of the Open Space Committee. John, thank you. And your dog. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'll keep this brief, but I, I think that uh, the fact that we're here today and not driving through a development is thanks to an awful lot of people. And uh, John Morton was at the forefront of it. We worked for over a decade with the owner. And in the end, she gave us a heck of a deal on this absolutely irreplaceable land. And there were others interested in, in its value in developing real estate. And uh, she was really committed to having it preserved forever. So I am thrilled. Uh, I. I I, I thank her in spirit. Um, she was, she's here with us today and uh, I'd say very happy. And one of the things that I just want to point out is so many people worked hard on this and it's not for us, not for us that are sitting here today, but for my grandson over there and all the other kids that we've seen here and, and it's for their kids because this will be here forever. So. Uh, thanks to everybody, all that very long list of people who were thanked because it did take a village, in this case a, a town, and the town meeting voters to approve it, and so I think it was one of our wisest decisions ever. And I'm going to uh, introduce David Lambert. David's uh, the town historian. Thank you, John. Since I was a kid, I went out to Glen Echo. Why? Because my grandmother told me in about 1905, she took the trolley from Mattapan. I asked my grandmother, how did you get here? There's no trolley in Stoughton. It was the bad bus line. But she took me down here and walked in a very overgrown path to the pond that she swam in as a child, right there. So to be here this morning is partly to honor my grandmother and nice to be able to bring my next generation, my own children here. We really have lucked out. In an age where so many things are torn down and built up, 
we now have something we can be proud of. As a town historian recently appointed by the select board, I hope that the vision of the future of our town can also look back to the history. As the 300th committee was just formed, we are just about to celebrate the town's 300th anniversary in 2026. It's not very far away. So I hope there'll be some events here. The pond behind me wasn't always called Glen Echo. The historic name to the early settlers here was York Pond, obviously with an English derivation. But I'm gonna give you a different name for it. Part of an ancient name that would have been the name for thousands of years from the time of the glaciers when this was dug out. This is a pog. An Algonquin pog is the suffix for a what is now a pond. You may have heard of other pogs. Walla Mala pog, Massa pog, Ponca pog. The ending is pog, pond. The other reason I'm here is because my dear friends, I consider them my second family, the Massachusetts tribe at Ponca pog could not be here. They are actually building a machoon. Now, you may not know what a machoon is, but a machoon is a dugout canoe. A large log, almost about the length of one of these entire rows, is being burnt uh, out traditionally in Charlestown right now. They're in the process of doing it. And hopefully, you'll see a dugout canoe be used on Glen Echo. Their land is still over there, but this was all part of their land. In fact, in 1657, when Reverend John Elliott set aside nearly 6,000 acres of land in what is now Canton and Stoughton, when we were still the South Precinct of Dorchester, their ancestors were there. The Massachusetts Ponca Pog are still around. There are over 300 members of the tribe right at the current moment, and they all descend from ones that were living not very far from here on Indian Lane and other places in Stoughton. I represent today Ferris Gray, the Sagamore of the Massachusetts, and send his greetings. Aquane, which is hello in the Massachusetts dialect of the Ponkapog. You are on their ancestral land now, which they share with you and send their greetings. And they wish they could be here, but chances are you will see them at many events in the course of the next few years. The reason that I think it is important to know who was here before is that we respect the history, the land of their ancestors as we share it with our descendants. Thank you so very much for being here today. And I wanna just turn to one more thing to say, to Butney. It's an Algonquin word saying thank you. And for all of you that have been involved in this process to bring such a glorious piece of history back to life again for the next generation, thank you. And I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague, Dwight McCarran, president of the Stoughton Historical Society. Thank you, David. And we'll do all we can to support the town as we approach the 300th. When we celebrated the 200th, it was a big deal, huge parades, whatever. So I look forward to seeing what we can come up with for the 300th. <clears throat> I probably should mention, too, to thank uh, Mark Rassicott's son, whose name escapes me, but as his Eagle John. Scout, John Stuart Rassicott did the sign, the Glen Echo entrance sign, which is out there as part of his Eagle Scout project. So. <laughs> this land is grounded in the past. If you haven't gotten one of these booklets yet, make sure you get one before you go. In the back, it's got a picture. Of that foundation right over there, when the Stoughton class of 1943 came here to celebrate their graduation, or some members, just a week before most of them went off to fight World War II, they, uh, that ballroom was here. And we have a booklet that shows John Carabazzo's father wrestling with his friend right about at this spot. And you can see the ballroom, which shows up here. A, a strange building, nice building, but it, it had a portico, a porch around it that had trees growing right up through the roof. So make sure you get one of these uh, documents before you leave. Um, yeah, the past. Uh, Dave mentioned the glacier. And we, we owe this pond to the glacier, which as I understand it, it's a kettle pond, one of Stoughton's few non-man-made ponds. Well, the kettle pond means that when the glacier was here 8,000 years ago, or receding, it left a huge chunk of ice and the land filled in around the ice, and then when the ice melted, you had a pond 60 feet deep in places. Unlike Ames Pond, let's say, which is a flooded meadow for a mill. So we owe something to the glacier. 
as the glacier receded, people, what they call paleo nomads, started coming through the area. Even if it was frozen here along the coastline, and by the way, the coastline went out to George's Bank at some time because all the, all the water was tied up in the ice on the land. They began wandering through here and they left some of their stone implements. This was long before we had Massachusetts tribes, Ponca Pogs, whatever, and some of the implements were found here, and that was one reason we had to wait eight more months before we could do this, because another archeological team had to come in, explore the fragments of them, whatever, and the, the stones are actually held in uh, Pawtucket at a, uh, the PAL, and it, I hope at some point we can at least get pictures so some of our signs that we have here can reflect the stones that were left, not by woodland Indians or by Ponca Pogs and Massachusetts, but long before them when Indians had no name, or we, we don't have a name for them. I appreciate David contributing the word Pog as pond. I'm trying to think of Glen Pog works, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so as, as he said, the Ponkapog Indian Plantation came down in its corner, was right that way, about 200 yards in the woods. The sign down there shows the day that, that we dedicated the sign, the first act of the Stoughton Historical Society, first big act in 1895 was to put that stone in. That meant the line came down here and then turned right, and all that was Ponkapog land, supposedly forever. Well, forever it didn't last that long, but the boundaries still do exist, and I hope at some point we can get a path into that stone so the rest of you can see it. That sign down there is cool because it does have some of the pocket pots that had sold the land to Mr. Monk, uh, present at the, uh, at the event. Elisha Capen Monk, who built the resort here, also founder of the Stoughton Historical Society, who put that stone in there, you know, had a vision, changed the name from York Pond to Glen Echo Lake, over time convinced the trolley to, to come down here, because at that time, 1895, let's say to 1910, this was a, if not a world-class resort, this was a high-end resort. People didn't have cars, but you could get on a trolley in Mattapan, or even further down, come out here on the trolley, and end up right in front of that rock. Our sign over there shows a picture of the trolley car standing right in front of that rock, and you can see the rock in the background. Um, he built many buildings in here. We know that the ballroom was there. The main inn was here. The, uh, I'm falling apart here. The over there, over there somewhere was a bowling alley. There was also a pool hall. But once our, the Boy Scout who's doing the project studies these buildings, and maybe they'll tell you exactly where the buildings were. Um, eventually, the Depression came, automobiles came, people discovered Cape Cod, that if you get in your car and drive to the Cape, coming out here on a trolley from Mattapan became less popular. Um, that business went bankrupt. Mr. Monk, Mr. Monk died, his, his uh, son George Monk ran it for a while, but soon, in the 1930s, they sold the land to the Gibsons. And it was the Gibsons that we eventually purchased this from. Um, Link Gibson tried everything he could to make money out of it. He, he bought a sawmill, and there was a sawmill down there as you take the path down to Dee Dee that Mr. Um, Linehan will take you on. Up, up on the hill, there was a sawmill, and when the hurricane of 1938 came, that sawmill made a lot of money. It was one of Link Gibson's better purchases. They had a big lumber truck, a converted truck. And by then, the um, dance hall had been turned into a garage, and they had the truck stored in there. The truck caught fire. They dragged it out over to about that spot right over there. And that truck sat there for many years. Some of you, if you've been around Glen Echo a long time, may remember that truck there. It was an old Link Gibson lumber truck. Then the Gibsons began to rent the inn out to local restaurateurs. Yaya Silva and his family rented it for six or seven years. So many people remember driving out here and having a good steak dinner, parties, dancing, whatever going on. And their daughter, Anita Silva, grew up here for seven years, the seven best years of her childhood, she said. And she's written an essay that's in a 
booklet that the, uh, the Stone Historical Society has. And so it, it's really a cool one, and we do have that booklet for sale over on the table, and we have it at the Society as well. Um, then the long, eventually, Pertigos also ran the inn for a while. There was a fire in 1988, and then in 1990, the inn burned completely to the ground. It had been deserted up to that point, so the inn was gone. So it just sat here, owned by the Gibsons, nominally posted. I mean, it was corrugated fencing all around this property, which didn't really stop generations of Stoughton and Canton kids from coming in here and jumping off Drum Rock, which is now owned by Ms. the Whitehurst, which I did that see sitting right there. And the town actually decided that it was too much of a liability, as much fun as it was. So, and the title was a little sketchy up there. So we carved off the, the Canton piece, and it's now owned by the Whitehurst. And uh, so that our trails stop there. In the past, by the way, this was all Canton. The Canton town line extended beyond beyond York Pond. In 1845, by an act of the legislature, they changed the town line. So it now it now exists halfway up the lake. Half of the lake is in Canton. And in those houses you see up there, including Ms. Whitehurst, are in Canton. Um, any pollution from the pond, by the way, doesn't come from Stoughton because we have no houses here. It's gonna be, I've, heard, I've heard that some of the uh, septic systems up there were, were built by Ponkapog Indians back in the day and are still being used. Um, eventually, John Morton, I don't know when John, who's going to be speaking, when he got, first got the idea, but he began his long conversations with uh, Joanna Gibson about the land. And at one point, Algonquin Oil was planning to put a pipeline right through the pond and was going to buy the land for us and give it to us if they could put a pipeline through it. Well, the gas market turned, the pipeline was not uh, built, but it was archaeological studies from that pipeline that actually was the first trace of these Paleo Indians and their wooden, their stone artifacts being in here. That came back into play when we got a grant from the state for our trails here. They made us go back and dig more to see if we could find more of those artifacts. So over a period of time, uh, John bargained with uh, Mrs. Gibson and things happened and eventually by the hair of our chinny chin chin passing both CPC which John was instrumental in and I helped a little and then purchasing this land by again the hair of our chinny chin chin we have it Yay. another long process <laughs> yeah, he, we'll now move to the present I mean the present I'm a history geek but I do have to remind myself to live in the present. In the present, we got a beautiful fall day here. Couldn't have asked for a better day. We got a beautiful spot. Um, so no matter what I say about the past, the real enjoyment is when we step on one of those trails and, and see what's out there. Um, and for the present, right now we have this much parking and maybe that's the right amount but you can see we have limited capacity the cars that you have here fill it if we want to have any larger events here we have to give some thought as to how we do that um, then moving to the future the stuff we have to do should do we should have a big sign right here that is sort of a map of the property it shows the trails on this side, the trails on that side, and just gives people when they walk in here a, a view of the overall property because it's new to many people. We are going to be working on trail maps that will show in detail the trails here, the trails there, and then we're all, we need to put in new trails. I think a trail that runs along that way on the side, a trail into that rock that I told you about that was the cornerstone of the old Ponkapog Plantation. Um, and eventually we're not going to have as many hiking miles as we have at Bird Street, but I think we can add two or three more hiking miles that will be you know, ecologically sensitive and appropriate. It'll, it'll make the place even better. David talked about the dugout canoe being made in town. I've seen pictures of it on TV of them burning out the inside. I don't plan to be paddling any dugout canoe on, on Glenpaw. What I do plan to do, and I've already done three or four times, is drive 
down this road right here, park there, take the kayak off my car, put it in the water right there, and paddle o around the pond. Um, and so for those of you who are kayakers, the purpose of this is to drive down there, put your kayak in, come back and park up here. So it's a, it's a great resource. I hear there's good fishing in it. Um, and I just look forward to all the years that we can spend here with, uh, in the future. Because it's beautiful now, but we can make it better if we put the time in. So I'd like now to turn that, this over to uh, John Morton, who, believe me, was the founding father, the godfather of all this, and both in getting a CPC and did so much work here. So, John, it's all yours. Hello everybody, thank you for coming. I have to confess this is an emotional day for the it's been into the microphone. It's been twenty one years since a couple of us invited Miss Gibson to lunch. And uh, we paid for that lunch. <laughs> and we asked her what her plans were for this wonderful place. And she made it clear that she would like to protect it. But she also made it clear that she had certain needs and those needs would have to be met. That was 21 years ago. For the next 10 years, we had several more lunches. John Linehan was constantly at our side. And we spoke about how we might make it happen. She constantly would say, we really want to protect this land. I call this park the People's Park, and I'll tell you why. When we finally came to a purchase and sale agreement for $1.2 million, she had already had a purchase and sale agreement for $3 million on this property from the gas company who was going to put a gas pipeline right under the lake and across the property and then donate what was left to the town for conservation. So her, she had heard the number three million, and uh, then reality set in, and the gas company disappeared because the demand for gas tanked. And so we were back to the drawing board. That happened probably 12 years ago. And we finally agreed on a purchase price of 1.2 million, and then we went to the CPC, which, by the way, existed because the people of the town of Stoughton voted to tax themselves and to create the CPC. That was after a long campaign, a long campaign that we were involved in. John Linehan was right by my side, handing out brochures as what was then the Shaw's Market to get people to understand that a small tax would be matched by a larger grant from the state. And sure enough, it did. And by the way, since that was adopted, we have received over $2 million in matching grants from the state. And all of that... <laughs> this was our first project, and I'll tell you one other thing. We voted this at the CPC to spend $1.5 million because we needed to pay $1.2 million for the purchase price, we needed to pay legal fees, we needed to pay surveyors, and we needed to pay for the uh, easement that was required of a third party under the Community Preservation Act. All of that having been said, after doing that, we went to the town meeting, and this is why I call this the People's Park. When we got to town meeting, it was uh, 2011, the chairman of the then Board of Selectmen, and I want to be clear, no reflection on the present board, stood up and advocated vigorously against the purchase. This was to become a development with all the big houses, maybe condominiums, no trespassing signs and private driveways. After he spoke, the town manager, no reflection on present management, stood up and advocated vigorously against the acquisition of this property. And then members of the uh, Conservation Commission, but mostly the Open Space Committee stood up and said something 
and I can summarize it by what I said. I said to the town meeting, if you vote against this, future generations will never forgive you. If you vote in favor, future generations will never forget you. And I think that's true. So if there's ever a plaque put up here, I want that plaque to say, thank you town meeting 2011. Without that vote, it would not have happened. Now, I, I say one other thing and then welcome you all and thank you for coming. This town is a town of volunteers. Almost everybody you've heard from today is a volunteer. They don't make any money for what they do. The Conservation Commission, the Open Space Committee, the planning boards are all volunteers. We all come to this town as citizens. We live here and we go home. If we don't, as a community, understand that we need to be involved and that our voices are important and that I'm no better than you and you're no better than me and we can all work together to do things like this, then good things will continue to happen. It took a team of dozens of people, dozens of organizations to make this happen and there were all people in large part volunteers. So I ask you to keep in mind that you are the ones who make a difference. You make a difference by doing something and you make a difference by doing nothing. I want to say one more thing. There's always one more thing. <laughs> Down the street about 200 yards from here, there's a Cape and Reynolds farm. They're having a yard sale today. Guess what? All the people at that yard sale are volunteers. They have formed an organization. Citizens did this, not the government. Well, I guess the government, because you are the government. Citizens did this. They have a thing called Friends of Cape and Reynolds. They have raised over $100,000 to support that Cape and Reynolds farm. There will soon be a dog park there. There will be a community garden there. All the planning's been done. And all they're doing now is going back to the CPC, which, by the way, was created by citizens like you to fund some of that and to raise the money themselves. So when you leave here, take a right off of Glen Echo Drive and drop by the Cape and Reynolds Farm. It's 28 acres. It's a beautiful building with an old farmhouse and a beautiful big barn and a lot of people who are working very hard to keep it that way. And I thank you all as citizens for the work and the effort that you put in, if at the very least paying a small piece of taxes to the CPC to make things like this, this uh, possible. Now, I thank you all for coming, and I hope you and all of your posterity enjoy this park forever. Take care. Thank you, thank you John. Now I'd like to introduce Jerry McDonald, the chairman of the Conservation Commission. Hi, can you hear me all right? All right, well, thank you all for coming today. Uh, as chairman of the Conservation Commission, I'm also on the Open Space Committee. Uh, I'm thrilled that this is open. Um, John stole my thunder a little bit because I was going to mention the Cape and Reynolds property, which is also a conservation property that we're doing a project on to try to improve that like we have here. We also have the Bird Street area and we have other areas around town. So uh, check the town website. You can see where you want to go for a hike. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I really can't add much to this other than it's a beautiful day. Uh, I want to thank uh, three people that were on the Open Space Committee back in the day. Uh, they've already spoken, they've already alluded to it, but we have to give a shout out to Artis Johnston, who is a founding member of the Open Space Committee. I worked, worked closely with John uh, Morton and John Linehan on that committee, so uh, they were just an awesome job, and uh, we have to thank them for pursuing this, and again, town meeting for uh, purchasing the land originally and then moving on to this project and, and other things. So that's really all I have to say. So thank you all for coming.
Thank you, Jerry. Now I'd like to introduce Deborah Roberts, Chair of the Select Board. Deborah. Hello everyone, my name is Deborah Roberts. I'm the chair of the Stoughton Select Board. First, I would like to thank Barry for inviting me to talk today, welcoming me to this beautiful event, this grand opening, this ribbon cutting ceremony of Glen Echo. I wanna thank the town meeting for approving the funding and for having faith in the development of this park. I would like to thank the Glen Echo Committee for their dedication from start to finish, the whole journey from beginning to completion of this project. I would also like to thank the Engineering Department, Conservation Committee, the Planning Committee, previous uh, select board members, and everyone else that helped to bring this to fruition. This was a team effort, and it shows what we can accomplish when we work together as a team, being an effective, collaborative team. Glen Echo Park benefits the citizens of the town of Stoughton. I was here last week, and I was just walking around, going through the trails, and one thing that caught my eye because it was the sun was setting, I just happened to look over the lake and see that beautiful sunset, and my first impression was, this is a piece of, of a dream. Once again, this was a team effort, and I, it is my pleasure, and I am so thankful to be here today in celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, this, uh, this almost concludes the speeches. I was remiss. I did not mention one of the scouts that had done his Eagle, uh, Eagle Scout project here. And that was, oh, wrong page. Uh, John Stewart Rack, Rackcock? Rassacott. 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 So let's give him a cheer. And uh, uh, so now uh, we've got the ribbon cutting, which we're going to set up shortly. Uh, we've got trails over here on this side. We've got trails on this side. And of course, you know about the, the pond and, and uh, the lake and, and where to take your kayaks and canoes and carry-ons. Uh, so after this, there's going to be tours taken of the trails. This side will be John Linehan, and this side will be... Uh, what's his name? Yeah, what's his name? Dwight. <laughs> Dwight, on this side. And then, so we kind of split up into groups here. And then when we're done, if you want to after that, switch over and you can see the other side. So we're going to set up now for the ribbon cutting. Thank you for your attendance. Take care.